but we want to begin in Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 through 3. We're going to be talking about the blessing. First, before we start talking about the blessing, I do want to, while you're going to Genesis chapter 12, um, verses 2 and 3, um, I want to tell you, I want to define prosperity so that we will, when, sometimes when we're talking about the blessing, people are thinking prosperity. Prosperity is, deals with riches, success, wealth, and uh, milk and honey, luxury, all of that. That's prosperity. And there's nothing uh, wrong with being prosperous. But this morning, we want to talk about the blessing. The blessing deals with a whole lot of different other things that we want to we want to talk about. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you it will not return void, but it will accomplish what you sent it forth to do. Father, I thank you as you elevate me to that high place. And Father, that we may hear from you this morning. And Father, that you may write upon the tables of our heart. And Father, lead us in your path, teach us your ways. Father, we do give you praise this morning as we prepare our heart and our mind and our ears. Father, everything that we are to hear from you, to serve you, spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen. Blessing is spiritual and material benefits given by God to be enjoyed. Blessing, the name of God, is also the appropriate response of believers to all that God has done for them. All that God has done for them. God is the source of all blessing. In Genesis 12, verse 2 and 3, it says, I will make you a great nation. He's, Of course, we know that at this point he's talking to Abram. He's pronouncing a blessing upon him and his generations. And that's one thing that we have to understand about a blessing. A blessing always includes your descendants, write that down, and it always will include nations. A blessing is always, always has its connection with a purpose and a plan in which God wants to do in the earth. Are you hearing me? Amen. So when he tells Abram, I'm going to make you a great nation, God has a reason. Amen. He has a plan. And he has a purpose. He says, I, and I will bless you and make your name great. He's not trying to make Abram uh, someone a celebrity because a lot of times we think of blessings we want to be a celebrity we want to be famous we want success we want riches because we think that riches will bring us notice but God is saying the blessings is not so that you may have a great name the only reason why Abraham's name is great is because of what the purpose and the plan in which God will use it to bring forth his purpose. Y'all with me? Oh my God. He says, and you shall be a blessing. I say, I shall be a blessing. Come on, somebody else say, I shall be a blessing. Come on, say it like you mean it and like you really want to be a blessing. I shall be a blessing. Amen. I, he says this to Abraham. He says, I will bless those who bless you. Wow. And I will curse him who curses you. I mean, to me, those are two grand statements. Grand. Because, of course, we all want the blessings. We want to be in a, per a place with God that we always have favor. That we always want to be in that place where he will, he can bless us, but we never think about that part about those enemies and people that come against you. Anybody ever came against you? Anybody ever had a problem lately? 
Anybody ever had a problem where you yeah, that uh, people try to curse you? Or maybe you didn't see it as a curse. But if if someone is if someone is negative and always talking down to you, they're trying to put you in a position to where you didn't you don't think that you are who God has said you are. Come on, that's that's the same thing as a curse. They said, "Well, you're just an idiot." Well, no, you know you're not an idiot. You know, you know I am blessed and highly favored. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. He says, "And in all the families of the earth." And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. All of his descendants and everybody. Because how many people know that Abraham, we are blessed because uh, Abraham, is, uh, means, excuse me, Jesus ultimately is a descendant of Abraham, which we have been engrafted into the, into the family of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Or by the blood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But God is the source of all blessings. In uh, First uh, Chronicles uh, chapter 29 and verse 11 and 12, uh, God says, Yours, o, o Lord, is the greatest, is the greatness, the power and the glory the victory and the majesty. I'm going I'm to open up that text. Uh, hold on just a minute because I like it. Yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and earth is yours. He's talking about this blessed place. Amen. He's talking about being in this blessing. He said, yours is the kingdom of God and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. You know, it is a, it is something to begin even your prayer and even your day with a a a recourse of this nature, where you begin to speak the blessings back to the Lord. Amen. Begin to bless Him with your with your voice, with your words, and this is what uh, the uh, the the. Uh, writer of Chronicles is doing, he is blessing God with his words. When he is saying, you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. How many people know it's too late to begin to um, magnify God in this way once you've got a big problem? Once you got a big problem, you need to be, you need to already be, you need to have your, your prayers saved up. How many people know? Save up your prayers. Amen. Store them up. Amen. The Bible says, store up your treasure where moth and rust won't get to it. I, I happen to think my prayers are treasures. Amen. I don't just look at my blessings as money. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Um, I'm going to finish this part and then I'm going to uh, finish this teaching and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk a little bit about Gideon. Uh, at creation, God blessed both humans with fertility and authority over the earth. In uh, Genesis 1, 28 and 30, it says that God blessed them. See, God always intended for you to be blessed. You know, when we were when this morning when we were coming in, we were teasing uh, the kids about about being blessed. Are they are they do they have that favor with their with their parent? And we were saying that you know that favor is that blessed place. Amen. Mm -hmm. And God blessed them. It said, and God said to them, "Be fruitful and multiply. Fertility is a blessing." He says, and have authority over the earth. God always intended for things, for you to rule things and things not to rule you. Come on. Come on, if you got a place in your life where, where you're being controlled, you're being ruled, how many people know you need to, you, that's why I always say take authority over it. Amen. Take authority over it. 
Because God always said, take authority over it. He said, you, you need to have authority over the earth. You don't need to just see the earth as this big round ball, but you need to see the earth as everything that you touch, every place that you live, every place that you breathe, every place that you walk. Amen. Everyone that you experience, everything that you experience, take authority. The disobedience of Adam and Eve caused God to remove his blessing. But, you know, Jesus Christ gave it back to us because he said, he said, have dominion. Come on. He said, he said, go ye in all the world. Yes, he did. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, this blessing promised to Abraham, this is what I need you to know, a blessing Includes your descendants and nationhood. The Bible says that a wise man leaves an inheritance for his kids' kids. You know, so much for so many people who think that they can just make their own living, don't even worry about how their children is going to live after, they, after they're, uh, they're gone. They don't even worry about... Um, how well they, they, you know, so many, so many people in the world are so trapped by finances, by prosperity, because they never really considered that the dec decisions that they make affect their generations. Because I believe that many people have acquired lots of wealth in their life, they just squandered it. Come on. Oh, I know. No, don't get on that, Apostle. The blessings includes your descendants. And your nation. Um, in Genesis uh, 17, 1 through 8, and I'm going to go there for a second. Uh, as soon as the computer decides to bring me there. Okay. And um, here's the sign of covenant. Then Abraham was 99 years old. You kids, I want you to understand something. When God began to speak to him, well, well, well. The the thing that Abraham was waiting on, when God told him he was going to make him a, he was going to make him the father of many nations. He was he was a, a young man. Now he's ninety nine. Somebody say he old. He old. Yeah, he old. And when when Abraham was ninety nine, because see, so God says, though the vision tarry. Wait on it. Amen. Just because God said a thing and you don't see it, I don't see it happening. It don't mean it ain't going to happen. Come on. Come on, I'm talking to somebody this morning. Because God has spoken some things to you, and because you didn't see it yet, you want to quit. But here's Abram was 99 years old and the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the almighty God and walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between you, me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Sometimes God got to wait until everything. This is what I say about this 99 year old man. And it's something that you might want to discover right now in your age. He got to wait till everything in you is dead. You say, well, what are you talking about? You, you got you to gotta lose all your intentions, all your purpose. You got to be ready to put aside your plan for God. Come on. Abraham, by now, he's like, you know what? I done done everything I know to do. I'm 99. What is it, Lord? <laughs> and that's the way you have to be. I believe that God is showing us this. And using this as a direct illustration of how he would deliver vision in your own life. Amen. He said, look, I'm going to make you exceedingly." And then Abraham fell on his face. And God talked to him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be the father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram. But your name shall be called uh, Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations, and I will make you exceedingly fruitful. <laughs> you know, he's not laughing. 
But his wife is in the next tent laughing. Because she old too. <laughs> and God is talking about y'all finna have some babies. See, y'all don't, don't understand. These people are old. They gray-headed. If we, they were living in our time, they'd be in the nursing home. Now you getting it? The woman, she, you know, <laughs> she, she like, what? Okay. So, God said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you. And you know, Abraham, if he ain't a man of God, because I know that he he probably probably checking that wine he just drank by right now. If if but he ain't, you know he know he's he know he's not intoxicated. If he is, the only thing he's intoxicated on is the spirit of the Most High God. He's like what? You know he's got to be. But he remembered what God said when he was a young man. Hmm. And here's God, and he's saying, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants. Here it is. The blessing is an, is, a, is an agreement between what God needs for you and your descendants, everlasting and everlasting. Amen. To be God to you and your descendants after you. He said, after you gone, you still, y'all still going to be blessed. He say, also I give to you and your descendants after you. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. It also always includes land. Amen? Amen. The, the uh, blessing always includes land. <laughs> Genesis uh, uh, 12 and 7 says, Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give this land. <laughs> okay. In uh, Deuteronomy 4.40, he says, uh, You shall therefore keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today. In Deuteronomy 11, 8 through 12, therefore, you shall keep every command. Let me open this up. I'm trying to, I'm trying to cut corners. Which I command you today that you may be strong. And go in, and everybody say, possess the land. Possess the land. Which you cross over to possess. Now listen, this is one thing that the blessing will do. It is for you, your descendants, for the nations, but it always includes land because God wants, because regions, stay with me, apostolic people. Regions, nations, lands, spears, Businesses, all of these things are apostolic. God wants his stuff back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he puts it into the hands of his people because he needs you to keep it. Hallelujah. He said, go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess. He said, when you cross over from being broke, and busted and disgusted, he said, cross over to possess and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to them and their descendants. He said, a land flowing with milk and honey. There's the uh, prosperity. Amen. That's not the blessing. The blessing was for your descendants, the nations, God's purpose. Of course, there's prosperity there. Yes. See, we, you know, we need to stop seeking. How many people know every time you're running after riches, it runs from you? Come on. Hello? When you're not seeking riches, they'll find you. For the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt from which you come. God say, the place you're going, y'all better stay with me. It ain't like where you came from. Uh, yes, Lord. Mm. Uh. He said, this is the blessed place. He said, where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. But the land when you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys. 
Woo-wee. Which drinks waters from the rain of heaven. God say, woo-wee. This is the good place. A land which the Lord your God cares. The eyes of the Lord your God are kept on it from the beginning of the year to the very end of the year. God said, when you, when you cross over into this blessed place, to the blessing, oh my goodness. He said, I'm with you all the time. Oh my goodness. He said, I'm with you all the time. All year. The blessings, here's, here's up. Four things I want you to write down as, the, as a blessing. Uh, the blessing is fruitfulness and prosperity. Oh, listen to this. It is Second, it is good health and long life. Amen. It is peace and victory over enemies. Come on, somebody. Amen. It is the promise of being blessed by future restoration. God say, if you do get grown down, I'm going to bring you out. That's what that means. So I'm going to say that again. The blessings also includes fruitfulness and prosperity. Deuteronomy uh, 7, 13 through 14. And, you, and he will love you and bless you and multiply you. He will bless the fruit of your womb. You believe it for kids? You need to put that down. Deuteronomy 7, 13 and 14. He, and it says he will give you prosperity. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 8. The Lord will command the blessing on you. Command it. That means you're going to be blessed. <laughs> in your storehouses and in all to which you set your mind to. Amen. The blessings of the of the blessings is good health and long life. Exodus 23, 25 through 26. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you, and no one shall suffer miscarriage or to be barren in your land and I will fulfill the number of your days. Hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. My goodness. I love it. And Deuteronomy 7 15 and the Lord will take away from you all sickness and will afflict you with none of the diseases. It goes on to say that. I'm, I'm not looking right ahead but well, none of the diseases that affected those people that was in Egypt. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, stand on that. Yes. And, and, and um, oh, I ain't done. Y'all sit down. I, I meant stand on it. Stand on those scriptures. <laughs> they ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> the blessings. Well, at least we know where everybody listening. The blessings of peace and victory over your enemies. Deuteronomy 28 and 7, the Lord will call you, cause your enemies who arise against you to be defeated before your face. Come on now. We need to write that down because when people are arising up against you, um, for your neighbors, for anybody who's trying to come in up against you, maybe it's people at work, and you know, Sometimes people just don't like you. Maybe you don't agree with you. You the you the green in the in the in the room full of blue. I don't know what it is, but if they your enemies, the, the Bible says the Lord will cause your enemies to rise against you, but they will be defeated. Amen. Who rise against you to be defeated before your face? How about that? I like that scripture. Leviticus twenty six, uh, six to eight says, and I will give peace in the land. I receive it. Come on, I receive it. And you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I receive it. How about that? I receive it for all of you. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. 
Amen. We receive that for our nation. We receive that for the United States of America. That the sword will not go through our land. You will chase your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight and your, your enemy shall fall by the sword before you. Amen. Okay, this is the last one. And then you all can really stand. But the promise of being blessed by future restoration, that if if someone comes against you, then um, um, and it, maybe, maybe you have a bad time, but God says he's going to fully restore you. Amen? Amen. He's going to fu fully restore you. Jeremiah 31 and 23, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, they shall reign use they shall again use this speech in the land i tell you what my glass is gonna have to be changed and this says the lord of hosts the god of israel they shall again use this speech in the land of judah and in its cities when i bring back their captivity the lord bless you O home of justice and mountain of holiness come on we receive that we receive that for our land we receive that for our nation and on this uh, 4th of July, as we celebrate the liberty and the freedom in our nation, we receive this, we receive this word from the Lord about not only um, for living and being, uh, being brought to a blessed place where we, can, where we can prosper, where we may serve the Lord with freedom. Yes. So this is what the Lord wants you to remember about of this message is that prosperity is wealth, money, riches, all of those things. Prosperity deals with money, but the blessings deal with with um, being um, being spiritually rich, being flooded with the blessings of the Lord. It deals with both spiritual and material benefits. Amen. Human fertility, authority, being renewed, being blessed includes land. It's a place for you and blessings include a blessing for you and your descendants in nations. It, it also, uh, you can also believe for fruitfulness and prosperity for good health and long life, for peace and victory, and all of that, we give God praise. In the name of Jesus, amen.